Let's talk about environmental damage, your skin, and antioxidants. Today we're going to talk about how these things work, what you should know if you do want to protect your skin, and at the very end I'll be sharing some skincare products and even some non-traditional things you can do to stop sun damage as well as environmental damage from tearing apart your skin. So when it comes to damage, this can happen to the skin in multiple ways. Obviously if you're over exfoliating, if you're picking at your skin, which uh, you definitely shouldn't do, or if if you're using products that damage it, you can damage your skin's barrier. You know, your skin, think of it as like the walls of a castle, right? It is built to be strong. Normally, it doesn't want to let products penetrate or get into it. It wants to keep things like bacteria and dirt out, but we can use products to penetrate and treat issues. Now, if your skin's barrier naturally is compromised, maybe you have a condition like eczema or psoriasis, or again, you've been using the wrong products or using way too many actives, just layering them up on your skin, and your skin is irritated, that is one form of damage. However, what about the things that we don't think about every day? Pollution is a form of damage. Sun damage is obviously a form of damage, but there are also intrinsic forms of damage such as stress and even things like having a bad diet that really doesn't support our skin. And again, just because you eat quote unquote healthy foods doesn't mean you're going to have great skin. And just because someone has bad skin doesn't mean that they eat bad foods. And just because someone has good skin doesn't mean they eat good foods. Um, if that were the case, then every person who ate bad would have bad skin and every person who ate good would have good skin. That is not true. Correlation is not causation. But what we put in is going to impact what our body is able to create out. And again, even this thinking of good foods or bad foods is very, very harmful. There's no such thing as a good or bad food. All foods belong in a diet within moderation or in different amounts, and it all depends on how you eat them and how you consume them. But we will be talking about those things in just a minute, not right now. First, let's talk about, again, some of these extrinsic forms of damage. Reactive oxygen species are everywhere. They happen inside of our body as our body is building itself and creating energy, and they also happen externally. You know, especially when it comes to the sun, that is one of the major destroyers of skin. UVA and UVB rays are extraordinarily damaging. They penetrate through the atmosphere, yes, some even through windows, and they get into your skin and they actually destroy your skin from the inside out. They damage DNA, and not only can they cause skin cancer, but they can also lead to wrinkling and premature aging. Now, there's even things like pollution. I live in San Francisco, California, and you know that we have wildfires over here. It's only been the last couple of years, but they've been really bad. And you best believe that a lot of that soot, that, you know, dead burnt stuff that's in the air, that carbon, can impact your skin, especially if you're exposed to the environment all day. If you live in a city where there's a lot of pollution, whether it be San Francisco, New Delhi, you know, some of the provinces in China, or just in a busy area, yes, a lot of that car exhaust can impact your skin. Is it the most important? No, sunscreen should definitely be your first choice. However, However, these things can cause an impact in the skin over time. And again, stress. Stress is a body destroyer. S small amounts of acute stress, such as exercise, are actually healthy, but long term, you know, chronic stress is not something we want to be aiming for. And that especially comes into play with our skin. Now, with all of these things, does this mean that we should just freak out about them? No, because remember, that would be counterproductive. We want to support our skin. We want to do what we can to help keep it happy and strong. So it's important to be informed of these things and aware of these things, you know, but not overly freaking out about them. And when it comes to what you can do, we're going to talk about skincare that you can put on your face, what you can actually eat or supplement in your diet, and even things such as physical barriers to pollution or damage. Let's actually start off here because yes, as a responsible human, you wear a mask. You know it's important for yourself and others, especially in the given climate. But one thing that I've personally noticed when using a mask like as an added benefit is the fact that mine are not only antibacterial, but they actually block the sun's rays. When you think about this, this is a physical barrier. It protects you and your skin, literally, from the sunshine. This is a really great way to protect your skin. And if you're wearing a hat or a beanie or something like that, it's a really great way to make sure that you're not getting unnecessary sun exposure. Yes, you should still be wearing a sunscreen, but these masks are so fantastic. These are the ones from Humankind. They're made in Korea. They are reusable and recyclable. They're super buttery soft. I love the way they look and feel. Obviously, this is not comparable to an N95 mask, but they are fantastic. It says here they are reusable, breathable, recyclable, and 99.9% .9 antibacterial. So if you are someone who struggles with mask acne, I've found these to be very helpful for myself. Again, we wear masks to stop the transition of disease such as COVID-19. We do it to protect ourselves and others. And guess what? It's an added benefit that if there's fires and there is soot flying around the air or pollution flying around the air, in addition to 
to the sun. This is a physical barrier that protects you from that sun. It is antibacterial, so this would be a better choice for people who have mask acne. And again, especially considering what's happening in the world right now, it is something easy simple and maybe even stylish that you can do to protect yourself and others. But now what else can you put on your skin? Let's talk about skincare, specifically antioxidants. Now antioxidants come in a lot of different forms. Again, you can get them in almost any step of a skincare routine. And if you're using something like vitamin C or even vitamin E, those are already antioxidants. But if you really want a boost, there are some products that I would recommend. This first one is from Paula's Choice. This is the antioxidant pore purifier. And this says that it has salicylic acid and white tea. So if you're someone who struggles with acne and you're looking for a little bit of antioxidant protection, this is where I would start. Let's talk about what antioxidants are and what these free radicals are. You see, electrons are these negatively charged particles that are really cool. They have a lot of mystery surrounding them, but they are essential to life. They fly around in orbitals and they allow all of life to exist, whether that is nature, that is the human body, that is your products or the things you eat. They allow medications to work and it's, it's science in everyday life. The thing about electrons is that if you have free electrons or if you have molecules that are unstable, they want to tear apart other structures. Um, if there's a missing electron, basically it wants to satisfy itself. One of the analogies that I like to use is going to prom. You know that person who is just desperate for a prom date? So desperate that they are willing to get inside of someone's relationship in between a couple and just tear them apart because they want a date. And that's basically what free radicals or these reactive oxygen species are doing to your skin. The antioxidants are pretty awesome because they kind of take one for the team. They have a lot of love to give and they can basically swoop in and say, hey, you sad little unpaired electron, don't destroy them, come take my hand instead. And they satisfy that free radical, that little electron so that it doesn't destroy skin. And again, this happens all the time. It's a natural process. The thing is that you don't want excess of it to happen if you don't have to. And that's why we should avoid things like sun, like smoking, like doing certain drugs, or, you know, not eating a diet that is rich in fruits and vegetables on top of the other things that you might consume. But in skincare, this is a serum slash moisturizer that is really made to help with antioxidants and for people with breakouts. Again, this does have that white tea, which is fantastic. This has tetrasodium glutamate diacetate. And this has phytic acid, niacinamide, panax ginseng root extract, a whole bunch of great stuff, including that salicylic acid. But it's also got white tea. Tea. White tea is great because yes, it is full of antioxidants. You could definitely put this on the skin, but you can also ingest it. When you ingest antioxidants, these can be really healthy. Now, obviously I'm holding up something that is tea here. You can consume this as a beverage and drink it. Your tea, your coffee, both have antioxidants. I personally love green tea or matcha green tea. This one is from a brand called Peak. I used to love these because I could put them in my purse or in my car if I was on the go. You just kind of sprinkle them in. But matcha green tea is amazing, packed with antioxidants and wonderful for your body, for your health, and yes, for your skin. But even outside of this, don't forget about regular foods. Anything that is a fruit or a vegetable with lots of colors has antioxidants. Berries, um, dried cloves have some of the highest levels of antioxidants. Even chocolate has antioxidants. And if you're feeding your body these nutrients as a part of a balanced diet, your body is going to function its best. You can also antioxidants through supplements. I've personally been taking these from Care Of. They're an eco-friendly little packaging. I like them. I find that it's less expensive for me to get them like this than if I were to buy all of these separately. But again, supplements should not be replacing your dietary choices. You need a balanced diet and get a blood test to see if you have any nutrient imbalances or what you're missing and then use supplements to step in. So yes, supplements are kind of like a band-aid, a great way to make sure that you have everything taken care of, but it really doesn't start with these things. It starts with your diet, which I don't even like the word diet. We should use lifestyle and healthy food choices because you want to make sure that you're eating things that nourish you. I personally follow a vegan diet. I have a lot of fruits and vegetables and grains inside of mine. I definitely eat fats, different carbs, different sources of protein. I like to switch it up to make sure that I am getting, you know, something that's balanced and delicious. I have a little food pyramid that I made that resembles my diet and what a balanced vegan diet can look like. So feel free to take a screenshot of that if you would like to. But remember that the right diet for each person is going to change. If you have celiac disease, go gluten-free. If you don't have celiac disease, don't go gluten-free. Gluten is a protein. It can be healthy for you. If you're someone who has epilepsy, maybe you want to try keto. If you don't have epilepsy, you probably don't need to be on keto, especially because people binge on keto and then they basically have a standard American diet. 
Although I love and advocate for a vegan diet because it's safe at all stages of life, there are some people who have restrictive tendencies that should not be on a vegan diet or who can't absorb certain nutrients. And that's why it's important to consult with someone who's not just a nutritionist like myself, but an actual dietitian, a doctor, a physician, someone who understands nutrition and who can guide you through different choices and really find out what your specific body needs. In general, if it is balanced, if it has lots of fruits and veggies, if you're following the My Plate and some of the dietary recommendations that are built backed on research, that's the best thing you can do for yourself. And remember, there's no such thing as good or bad, it's all about balance and getting those antioxidants in. But thank you for coming to my TED Talk, Back to Skincare. Other than this little product, something else I would recommend are vitamin C serums, especially when you use them in combination with sunscreen. This is the sunscreen I'm currently using. It's the Innistree one. It does have hyaluronic acid in it, specifically eight types of hyaluronic acid, so it's very soothing. I find that this gives a ton of glow to my skin. This is also one that's passed OTC testing in Korea. There have been some issues with a specific manufacturer in Korean sunscreens. This one did not come from that manufacturer. There are no questions about it. OTC approved. This also has an SPF 50 that again has been proven. It is my favorite Korean sunscreen at this point. I absolutely love it. It's the watery sun gel. And remember, any sunscreen is going to help protect you from some of that damage from the sun. For cancer, for wrinkles, even for making things like acne turn into hyperpigmentation or into scarring. Um, if you're not protecting yourself from the sun, most of your other skincare is useless. So please get on something good that your skin likes. In the past, sunscreens used to be really lotion-y, really greasy. I understand why people didn't like them. But we've come so far in our cosmetic formulations, especially having sunscreens that melt into the skin nicely, that don't feel greasy on the skin, that actually have benefits like hyaluronic acid. This is one that's inexpensive that I would recommend, but I've actually created an entire list of sunscreens as rated by Whitecast, um, which I'll leave as a link in the description below so that you can go check out and find what's right for you. And of course, vitamin C. Vitamin C is an amazing antioxidant. People know it to be brightening, it can help with pigmentation, it can really help to give glow to the skin. When using it in combination with sunscreen, it can actually help boost the sunscreen up. Remember, vitamin C is not a replacement for sunscreen, you still need to reapply it. But vitamin C is an antioxidant, so it can kind of scavenge for those free radicals, and the sunscreen, you know, is trying to fight against them, so it kind of boosts each other up. And there's actually systems in the body where vitamin C and vitamin E can kind of regenerate and reinvigorate each other. There are many different types of vitamin C. Um, there are tons. You have everything from sodium ascorbyl phosphate to magnesium ascorbyl phosphate to L-ascorbic acid, even D-ascorbic acid, but we don't really use that one in skincare because it's not as stable. This is the Fundamental Watery Drop from Dear Claire's. This is so cool. It almost heats up on the skin. It's really a sensorial experience. If you could have like a skin sauna in a skincare product, that's how I would describe it. Skin menopause, it almost feels like a flush, like a menopause flush. I haven't gone through menopause yet, so I don't know from firsthand experience, but you know, I've had patients and helped people who've gone through menopause. And um, based on their descriptions of how it feels, it's almost like a little flush to the skin. I would call it like, you know, a positive vitamin C menopause flush in a bottle. I love this stuff. It's inexpensive, cruelty-free and vegan as always. And again, this is one of those antioxidant products that you can add to a skincare routine for a little bit of extra protection. At the end of the day, the fact that you're even interested, the fact that you're learning, hoping to understand and take care of your skin is what's important. Your skin takes care of you and that's why it's important to return the favor. If you know someone who's struggling with their skin or who doesn't use sunscreen or is worried about skin damage, be sure to send this video to them, especially if you think it can help. And if you want some more of the references and resources, the actual medical and scientific data that I use to create these videos, I've left those all in the description below. Also, if you are new here because a friend or just the internet sent you, welcome to the butterfly community. Hit subscribe and that notification bell so that when we talk more about these skin concerns, about different conditions, and even react to different routines, you don't miss it. If you liked this video, show that with a like, and always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you, I hope that your skin loved this video, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. <sighs> love you guys, bye.